I just decided to look up in Webster's dictionary what 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 it says about demons. I mm. thought it was interesting. <laughs> so Webster's dictionary says demons. The definition for a demon is an evil being, devil, mm. a persistently tormented, a, a persistently tormenting person, force, or passion, an inferior divinity. Mm. And that's the truth. Mm. Vine's dictionary says that demons are spiritual agents acting in all idol uh, acting in all idolatry. They seek to seduce believers. The enemy demons tremble before God. They recognize Christ as Lord, and, and and He is their future judge. So God has called us all the rain, and so that's why it's really important that we get in our brain, in our mindset, that we know who we are in Christ, yeah. and that we understand mm. that we are the head, yeah. not the tail, yeah. and that we have authority, yeah. and that we have to know that that the enemy is going to torment us, he'll try to make us afraid, he'll try to get us to be intimidated, try to get us to back down. That's his, that's his mode of operandi. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to recognize is that now more than ever, we have got to press into the Lord. Mm -hmm. I believe with all my heart in, in some of the things that we've been saying in church is, you know, God is calling us into, I believe is he's releasing a prayer movement. Mm -hmm. And God is yeah. calling us into a deeper place and understanding. You know, we've been talking about the altar of the Lord and, you know, again, in, in, in the first Kings 18, before Elijah was able to call down the fire of God, when he was dealing with the prophets of Baal, they had to restore their altar. And so we have got to, I don't yeah. care how many years we're saved, we have got to renew our passion in Jesus. We yeah. have to do that deep Amen. place with him, worship him. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I'll tell you, that's what happens when we're in that place and we have the, the light bearer in us. And we do have it. But when that fire is burning, you think demons have a hard time now. They will run and yeah. they will flee. Yeah. And the world needs yeah. to know a people that know yeah. who they are in Christ, know our authority. And that... Um, you know, love people, we walk in love, and we're not going to, you know, curse people, but yet we're not going to tolerate mm -hmm. what the enemy is trying to do in our land. Mm -hmm. That's right. So uh, God has called us to reign. So I think on your hand that I have the scripture, uh, and um, in, in, the, in, in Galatians 4, 6, and 7, in New Living Translation, it says here, and because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God made you his heir. All right. So the definition for heir, I don't think I have this on your handout. No. 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 I do or don't? No. 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 All right. No. It's, it's K.L. Clar Claramos. And it means a recipient of divine promises. So we are his heir. And we are a recipient of his divine promises, okay? And so deliverance is based on our faith. And, and we're victorious. And so, listen, God wants us to understand that we are entering into the greatest movement ever. Yeah. There is a harvest. Yeah. Yes. And, yep. and God is wanting us to know how to operate in this. And that when we recognize and when we see something, that we're going to know how to cast that thing out or bind it at least, you know, mm -hmm. and because again, you have to have discernment and know where and when to operate. But listen, lately, especially in the schools, actually, we should start in, in the government. <laughs> anyway, um, so in Luke 4 18 and 19. Uh, in the Passion, it says, the Spirit, this is Jesus speaking, and I'm also going to read you out of the Passion in Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Put your name in there. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon Anna, Linda, you know, because he has anointed me to be hope for the poor. I love the way that's worded. Hope for the poor. Freedom for the broken heart. Yeah. yeah. And new eyes for the blind. Isn't that good? And to preach to prisoners. You are just, you are set free. I have come to share the message of Jubilee for the time of God's great acceptance has begun. Mm. Now, here, let me read it to you out of the passion here. And um, I really like the way it's worded here as well. All right, it says here, um, the mighty spirit of Lord, the Lord Yahweh is wrapped round of Mount, around me. Isn't that good? Just Ooh, picture like a blanket wrapped around yeah. around wrap. I can't even talk tonight. Around <laughs> you, because I didn't have tea. Because Yahweh has anointed me 
as a messenger to preach good news to the poor. Mm. And he sent me to heal the wounds of the broken heart. Yeah. See, this is our call. Yeah. And yeah. to tell captives, yeah. you're free. Yeah. And to tell prisoners, be free from your darkness. Mm -hmm. And I am sent to announce a new season yeah. of Yahweh's grace mm -hmm. and a time of God's recompense on his enemies and to comfort all who are in sorrow and to strengthen those crushed by despair who mourn in Zion, to yeah. give them a beautiful bouquet in the place of ashes, the oil of bliss instead of tears, yeah. and the mantle of joyous praise instead mm -hmm. of a spirit of heaviness. And because of this, they will be known as mighty oaks of righteousness yeah. planted by Yahweh as a living display of his glory. Now, I love the footnotes that Brian Simmons has here. And he said here um, under this, our Lord Jesus quoted this passage in Luke 4, which I read, and introduced his jubilee ministry to Israel. The first three verses of the chapter describe the twofold mission of Jesus to open the door of the day of grace to the world and to proclaim the day of vengeance coming on sin, darkness, sickness, and eventually the goat nations. I love that. He's released his vengeance on sin. He's released his vengeance on darkness and sickness. And then it says here, and as a prophet, he's come to preach the new season of grace. And as a priest, he's come to heal. And as a king, he's come to decree and herald peace and freedom to the captains to the captives. Now, the Bible says in Revelations that we are kings and priests. Mm -hmm. So we have that authority, right, to issue decrees and to, yeah. um, to, to minister healing and deliverance to, to the body of Christ. So, um, you know, I just, I just love med meditating on that. And, you know, we have had the privilege of seeing so many people set free. And, um, and we have some amazing testimonies that we can tell you of, of deliverances that have taken place of, of lives that have been totally transformed. And that, you know, of course, the person has to want it, but it really, it's a challenging ministry, but it's a marvelous ministry. And, you know, the interesting thing here, too, is that, you know, many people um, mock it or they try to put it down or they try to, you know, give you a hard time about it. And, not, and I'm done with all that. I really am. And so, I mean, we never let it bother us any in the past because people from all over come here for deliverance. So, um, but, you know, it's a lifestyle. It's not a one-time session. Right. Deliverance is a lifestyle. And, and, you know, I had ministered somewhere and I had asked um, the leaders there at this particular church. And I said, hey, have all of you guys gone through deliverance? And the leader said to me, well, we're leaders. I'm like, yeah. And, you know, all the more... You know, I mean, my Lord, are you kidding? None of us walk on water. And the thing is, you want to maintain a humble attitude. Yeah. And that, yeah. you know, I'm constantly checking my heart out. And, you know, we all pray and ask for prayer and go before one another and ask if everything's right. I mean, do you see this in me? Do you see a demon in me? You know, you have permission to tell me or cast it out of me. And, you know, all right, Jim, so I'll meet with you later. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding just kidding but, but we do that and we have to be transparent and humble and not think we're above and and that see, listen you you all heard about rabbi zacharias right okay none of us but for the grace of god that could be us now he made some dumb choices but that's why you have to have people around you that you're accountable to you have to submit to leadership and I'm going to talk a little bit about that because some of us came out of stinky leadership where it was abusive or very controlling. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that because it's really important that we understand the healthy leadership, right? Yeah. But but Ravi Zacharias, you know, I mean, yeah. brilliant man, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah. he just, you know, would speak the word of the Lord and give understanding to people. But then the enemy had a plan because the enemy yeah. always wants to take us out. That's yeah. why we have to have covering. That's why we need to have account accountability. The Bible says in Proverbs that a wise man or woman has a teachable spirit. That we need to submit ourselves and surrender ourselves to people around us that we trust that can call some things. You know, I, I mean, I want to know. If you're saying something, I want to know. And so, you know, I have my people, I tell them, and I'll call them and say, I'm really struggling. If I'm struggling with something, I don't care. I'm going to tell them about it. What? They're going to tell you whether you ask them not. That's that? They're going to tell you whether you ask This is not. true. This is very true. <laughs> but you know what? I'd rather people be truthful. That's right. That, that you're in right. a relationship with than, than, than you know, not tell you. You know, I always say it. 
because I, I think it was Ed Sobolson said that, that, um, you know, it's like having bad breath. You know, you're the last one to know because nobody wants to tell you about it. Well, please stop. <laughs> you know, just hand me some gum and I'll get the you know, you know, right? So, you know, but but it's, it's, it's like that with us. And so I said, Lord, you know, every day when I'm before him, Lord, you know, and, and I'm in that place with him and worshiping, he'll show you your heart. Amen. But yes. I'm like, Lord, show me. I don't want to do anything that would bring a reproach on your name. And that's what happened with Ravi Zacharias. It brought a reproach on the name of the Lord. And I can only imagine the people mocking wow. Christianity, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and his family, you know, you feel for his family and what's happening. So, again, my whole thing about that is, you know, we all need to always go through deliverance. We, I call it my spring cleaning. You know, we, we go in from injury once a year just to make sure. It doesn't mean you have demons. It just means that you just want to make sure your heart is right before the Lord. And if there is a demon, we'll take authority and we'll deal with it. But, um, but you know, again, that it's, you know, deliverance is also very progressive. There's a process in it in our lives. And so, um, and that's the thing. You know, we teach a lot or, you know, my husband was doing the Elijah house and we can have that bitter heart or that stony heart, mm -hmm. right? Where we're not really tapping into the spirit realm. We're not really getting into that deep place. And that's because of wounds and, and, right. and, and right. just, you know, right. inner vows that we've made right. and we'll address that. But that's something that I constantly say, Lord, I don't want to have a hard heart. That's the right. disciples were with Jesus for three years. Mm -hmm. And they, and when uh, they were in the boat, and one of the scriptures in the New Testament says that they were uh, questioning Jesus and, and about some miracle. And Jesus said, are you going to still really question me about this? He said, you know, he said, you saw the miracles with the fish and the loaves. You saw the different miracles. He said, but it's because of your hard heart. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. They were with Jesus. Wow. Mm -hmm. right. wow. Okay. Wow. So that could be any one Ooh. of us. Yes. And yes. so. You know, I said, Lord, you know, and what causes a hard heart? Yeah. Bitterness, yes. unforgiveness, yes. Right. when you're hurt, when that's you're right. wounded. Right. Yeah. And um, so that's something I said, Lord, I know I've had a hard heart and issues. I know that's when I had gotten passive with the Lord and I pulled back a while ago. And um, because it's just, you just get sick of stuff. And, you know, we all have been through church life and church issues and you know, here we are pastoring, and I told my husband, I'm not coming to church. I'm done with church, you know, so I have a little hard heart, you know, I get a little upset on certain things, but we go through stuff, right? Listen, I'm in church now, <laughs> but you know, you get hurt, Yes. and, and you know, you all aren't the only ones that gets hurt. That gets hurt. They get hurt. Pastors do too. We right. right. And so, yeah, she fights like one tool now falls it. She fights. So anyway, so wow. we all have to go through, and that's the thing. We all have to bow our knees, and we have to humble ourselves before the Lord, give yeah. up our right to be right, and choose to forgive. And forgiveness, as you know, is key. Whenever we are going through deliverance with an individual. And we have a hard time with that person getting free. Usually it's deliver it's unforgiveness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, unforgiveness towards yourself. Wow. Not mm -hmm. releasing yourself from right. bad mistakes. Yeah. 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 So um in on I think this is on your hand. On John 10 10 in the passion, it says the thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to seal, seal, slaughter, and destroy. It says here, but I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect, mm -hmm. life in its fullness until you overflow. Mm -hmm. Now, the Lord Jesus in, in the scriptures, it's on your handout somewhere, but in first John, it says that Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the enemy. So if he was manifested to destroy the works of the enemy, I want to know whatever I can know about walking in my freedom, because if there's anything that's holding me back, I want it out. And I want it in a lot of its mindsets. Now, I, I firmly believe with all my heart that a lot of, a lot of times when we're, we're really struggling with an issue, it's because we don't understand, we don't know the word. And we have got to meditate on the word because the word brings you freedom too. Yes, yes. Because that what happens is I hear people say, you know, because you can, there is self deliverance that, that can be done. But then there are times you just really yeah. need to, the Bible says in James, confess your faults one to another. The Bible says that, that lay, let the elders lay hands on you. You know, there's times when you just need to come clean 
to someone that you trust. That's right. Right. And that's confidential. That's right. not going to talk that's your right. business. Like, that's a pet peeve right. here, you know, that, you know, and everybody, that, you know, East, everybody, Cindy, everybody like vaults. No one talks about anything. And we actually forget it half the time, whatever you said to us, you know, especially at this age, we're like, I told us that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't remember that. But anyway, but, so it, God protects us. So we don't remember half the stuff. No, it's true. We don't remember half the things people tell us. We meet with so many people. And you're like, Oh, okay, you know, and like we just met with someone this time one, not too long ago, and I'm thinking he's talking and talking and talking. I'm thinking I don't even remember what the world this guy's like, right? So, but anyway, but we're just listening, or going along with it, you know. Anyway, so you know, the Lord wants us to be humble, yes. humble, yes. humble, humble, yes. and that Lord show me. Yeah. Now again, now here's the other yeah. thing. I don't think every, every when I when I'm talking about deliverance tonight, I am referring to demons. But a lot of times, deliverance is just a really a shift of a mindset. Mm -hmm. I don't think everything's a it's devil, mm -hmm. right? It's That's a mindset. Right. So right. I don't think everything's a it. devil. So, you know, years ago, mm -hmm. you know, when when we were doing it, I, you know, around certain circles, I mean, everything was a demon. Mm -hmm. And that is not the case. He's not that good. That is, yeah. You know, everything was a devil. Yeah. Wow. And so that's something, again, we have yeah. to just draw that line and understand yeah. Yeah. that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He says, but I have come to give you that life more yeah. abundantly. And his, when we become born again, and I know you know this, I'm just getting ahead of myself, but I'll show you the scriptures. Our spirit automatically is born again, as you know, but our soul yes. needs deliverance. Yes. Yes. So you'll have ministries and different, you know, groups of people saying, no. When we're born again, all things are become, oh, you know, yeah. new and, you know, we're all new in Christ and so forth and so on. Well, half the church is bound. What are you talking about? Right, right, right. You know, so something's up there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so you have people struggling with addictions. You have people battling with tremendous fear. You have people battling with depression and hopelessness yeah. and, you know, all kinds of sexual sin, pornography. Are you kidding me? Right. So right. Jesus came and set us free. He didn't, camp, you know, he didn't die on the cross brutally. So that we stay bound in these issues. Yeah, that's right. right. And so that's why, again, I want everything that the Lord has for me. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, everything right. that He has for our kids, everything yeah, that He yeah. has for right. you know this nation and, and what's going on. I do believe our prayers. I do believe mm -hmm. us understanding truly the authority that we have can shift things. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I was reading an article about a pastor in Uganda and um he was talking about they lived during the Idi Amin regime mm -hmm. and what was happening, obviously, I and mean, they were killing everybody. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, they just would come in the middle of the night, pull families out and, and, and just butcher them, mm -hmm. chop them up. Mm -hmm. And kids would see, I mean, just, I mean, think about how frightening we're, we're upset over this LGBT curriculum, right? That these people were being pulled out of their home, being chopped up. And he said, we had to get on our feet. We were crying out oh, day and night Jesus. in holy desperation, mm -hmm. but believing that God would do something. But there was so much turmoil. And he said, we prayed for 12 years, 12 years. He says, our whole nation has been turned upside down. Mm -hmm. He said, half the government are all born again. Wow. Wow. Yes, the persecution was yeah. awful. He says, but it got us to, to, to you know, cling to the Lord and to pray mm -hmm. and decree and and you know, because there's so much occult activity. See, at, when you're at in these countries, I've been to, I've been to Africa, I've been in these countries. They have no problem believing in the spirit realm. They recognize the yeah. demonic. They recognize yeah. the spirit of God. But here, we try to intellectualize everything. Right. Yeah. So you know, they were. You know, he said we were just pressing through and and praying. He says now our country. He said, has just so shifted. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, Idi Amin, I, I don't know what happened to him. I guess he got killed. I, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, he's no longer in power. But but, but it was so demonically inspired. Right. Just like abortion is demonically yeah. is inspired. That is yes. mullet. That is a spirit yes. of death yes. and murder. Yes. We cannot agree with that. We cannot yeah. align with that. Right. This Amen. Equality yeah. Act, we cannot yeah. align yeah. with that. That's yeah. why we have to pray yes. and press yeah. through. Listen, we are not a, a defeated people. We have oh, the man. power That's of God. Right. We have resurrection right. life within us. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And we're talking about doctrines of devils over right. here. Yes. Seducing people yes. and trying to take over things. Yes. Oh, no, it's oh, not happening. Right. One right. has a thousand of life, yeah. two yeah. has ten thousand. Yeah. Right. Come on. Right. I was yeah. reading, yeah. you know, I love reading your Bibles, and I was reading about the uh, it's, uh, cry of Argentina. I forget what the book's called. And um, 
they were, they, this one guy went there, Tony Hicks, and he had a passion for, uh, for Argentina and praying and praying and praying and praying. And so he's at this church and, um, you know, the one guy that came to the prayer meeting was an alcoholic and he would always come drunk. And then there were over like six or seven women and they would pray and they would just go around this table and pray. And he's like, oh, Lord, have mercy. It seemed like nothing was happening, getting discouraged and depressed. Did you ever get there with your prayer life right now? Oh my God, what's happening? And so praying and praying and praying. And so he said to the one old lady, he said, anybody, he goes, any of you people getting anything? And the one lady said, you know, well, I don't know. I just feel like I have to do like this on the table. He goes, oh, brother. He goes, all right, we'll just do it. When she did that, the power of God fell, and they were all nailed by the Holy Spirit. Wow. And at that point, it started to progress, and they started to really pray and press in. And he had a word of knowledge to go to Ava Perone's mm. husband, Don Perone, or Juan Perone, mm. and uh, pray for him. And apparently, he had some kind of skin issue. Mm. And so, when he went to the White House in Argentina, he went there to pray. Um, uh, the Lord, uh, he went to one of the guards, and the guard laughed at him and said, There's no way you're going to get in to see this guy. And so, the Lord spoke to him about this guy that he had some kind of stomach issues. And he prayed for him on the spot. The guy got healed. Oh, and he's wow. like, oh, my gosh. He goes, I have to let this guy know about it, right? I'm telling you, this is why, why I'm telling you this. Because this is nuts. We all have this ability. Yeah. 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 And so, what happened at the time, the reason why that regime was so awful, they had um, one of their main confidants was an occult leader. He was a Satanist. Mm -hmm. And so they, the whole thing, the whole regime there was occultic. And so anyway, he finally gets in to meet with Don, I mean, Juan Peron. Mm -hmm. and, um, and he was able to pray for him. And the skin disease yeah. got healed. Oh, now he was hungry, but Ava was not. And they yeah. had prayed. And they had prayed and prayed and prayed. For her deliverance and for her to accept the word, but but uh, it's like eighteen year, eighteen months later. Now I'm telling you, there was a conflict, there was a war going on in the spirit realm. Yeah. Evil versus good, like what's happening here in America. And she died. She was like thirty two years of age, wow. and she died of uh, I think it was uterine cancer, ovarian yeah. cancer, something like that. Listen, we're we are coming to a place now where it's dangerous. Yeah. And yes. 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 So yes. We're, we're dealing yes. with now. It's evil versus good. Yes. 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 Now, the Bible says that God doesn't want that any should perish. Right, right, However, right. They're, they're making their own choices. Yes, they're making yes. their own choices. Right, yes. And I'm talking about people like that are really like, uh, in, you know, implementing laws and stuff that are detrimental to yeah, our country. Yeah, and it's yeah. very serious, mm -hmm. you know. So anyway, so so we have this authority. Now, Luke 10, 19 in the Passion reads like this. It says, now you understand that I have imparted to you all my authority. God has imparted Jesus. He imparted to us. All authority to trample over his kingdom. You will trample upon every demon before you and overcome every power Satan possesses. And absolutely nothing will be able to harm you as you walk in his authority. Amen. Now, why does the enemy come after us to try to hinder us? Right? Tries to intimidate. He does it to all of us. Try to get you to second guess. Try to get you to pull back and fear of man. Tries to get us to, yeah. there's this fear of man that, that's in operation to try to get us not stand true to our faith. Mm -hmm. right. No, the enemy has to back down. That's right. and we, yeah. The atmosphere in us changes the atmosphere. That's see? Right. And that's where we have to recognize, and that's what the Lord said to me. He says, Tricia, he goes, I know you understand a lot of this, says, but I want you to review who you are in Christ mm -hmm. and the authority that you have in my relationship with you as a covenant, um, you know, a believer. All the principles, all that, that comes to us on behalf of what God has done for us. Mm -hmm. Psalm 89 says that he, his covenant, he doesn't alter. Mm -hmm. That he watches over his word. The covenant of God is eternal. Yeah. What's the covenant? Healing, yeah. deliverance, yeah. prosperity, preservation, yeah. safety. I mean, that's, that's it's an all-inclusive package. Yeah. Yeah. And so he says to us, we don't have to be afraid. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark 16, 17, these signs will accompany those who believe in my name, and they will drive out demons. So obviously, G Jesus affirmed. I mean, obviously, you're all here. It's not like I have to try to convince you that Jesus said that it's okay to cast out devils, right? Yeah. They inspire works of darkness. And, mm -hmm. and so we have to recognize that even when we are praying, when we're praying, we're making an announcement to the kingdom of darkness. 
that the light of God is here and you're backing down. Yeah. So yeah. again, yeah. it's that like a battering ram when you're yeah. consistent in your prayers. I'm talking about prayers. We'll get into individual prayers, but we're consistent in praying, right? And the Bible says that, um, you know, that the Bible says that we're uh, his battle axe in Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. We're battle axe. I mean, I know that it could be derogatory, but we are a spiritual battle axe. Battle axe is powerful. And, you know, also dread champions. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. We're dread Ooh. champions. So I like to see myself as that. We're more than the conquerors of Christ who strengthens yeah. us. Yeah. We can do all things, right? That's right. I always keep uh, combining yeah. the scriptures. But, but that's who he says we are. Mm -hmm. All right. So Jesus made an announcement to the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. And I, I quoted it before, but I'll read it to you out of the Amplified. But he who commits sin, who practices evil doing, is of the devil takes his character from the evil one. For the devil has sinned, violated the divine law from the beginning. The reason the Son of God was made manifest, visible, was to undo, destroy, loosen, and dissolve the works of the devil. Now, um, you know that by, uh, like, what's on TV? I, I mean, I don't know what TV shows are on, but I know in movies, they're, they're either violent <coughs> Yeah. And just awful um, or occultic mm -hmm. or yes. everything sex. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. So mm -hmm. I mean, you see what the in, the enemy, and that's been for a long time, but it's just um, you know, it's getting worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And that's why really it's up to the church. I really believe, you know, we know the church is the ecclesia, yes. the legislative yes. one, the called out one. Mm -hmm. We are not called to just have little nice little church service. We're called right. to make a change. Right. But if we are in an intimate place with him, don't know who we are, recognize the power of God in us and say, wait a minute, we are not tolerating what's happening here. Right. This is a part of our deliverance because we have, we can speak you know to to the nations we we have that right as yeah. as the one we're in the era of pay mm -hmm. and you decree that thing that shall be established unto us i mean we have that right and so yeah. uh, the other scripture i i want to read to you is in luke 10 17 and 19 in the amplified it says here the 70 return with joy saying lord even the demons are subject to us in your name and he said to them i saw satan falling like lightning flash in heaven but behold, I've given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability. Think about that. Mental. How about, how about mental torment that the enemy releases? Uh -huh. And over all the power that the enemy possesses and nothing shall in any way harm you. Now, in the New King James Version, it says like this. Behold, I've given you power to trample on serpents and scorpions. And over and, and over all the power of the enemy. So when you look those two words, those two power words up, it means one is authority, one's power. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so authority, the first power word is authority, and it's exosia, E-X-O-U-S-I-A. It's not on your handout. And that means the power of rule or government. It's delegated authority, commands that have to be obeyed. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have that like delegated authority. We're decreeing that the enemy has to obey us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Power. Then the second power word yeah. there is dunamis, which means strength, power, and ability. So God is saying to us, we have the power of rule or government. Mm -hmm. We have that right That's to take right. authority over the thing. We have that right because we have his strength, his dynamite power, that ability that is within us to take authority over this stuff. Okay. Over the enemy. Mm -hmm. So we have unlimited unlimited authority Amen. Amen. the enemy would try to let you think you don't but we have yeah. unlimited authority we have seen that over and over and over and over again in deliverances the enemy will start speaking you know you know we always tell them to be quiet but but just like try to tell you we're not listening to you shut up you know blah 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 you know of course we don't let them talk but they have to obey That's but right. see the enemy also knows that you know who you are because they'll challenge you on stuff Right? right, the enemy also knows if you're in sin, uh -huh. that's why you need to make sure you're not in sin if you're going to get involved yeah. with this stuff. Because yeah. remember, the seven sons of Sheba yeah. they said, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, but who in the world are you? And they beat the guys up. Mm -hmm. So, we have to recognize and say, Wait a minute, Lord, you know, that's why we have to have a humble, broken, and contrite heart before the Lord, not act like we know more than Jesus or be very spiritually proud, you know, that that's wrong. And, and, and that religious system is what really took Jesus out anyhow. Right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we have to be careful about that. So 
In 1 John 4, 4, it says, little children, you can be certain that you belong to God. You have conquered them. For the one who is living in you is far greater than the one that's in the world. Amen. See, when you recognize you have that, like a spiritual weightlifter, like a lot of times in my mind, I'll, I'll see my spirit man like buff. Really, Bill. You know? That's all right. That's how, that's how I try to picture him. Like, kick your sorry behind you. And, that's what it and so back down. And 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 so in Mark 18, I'm sorry, Matthew 18 in the Passion. This is really important that we get this. Now it says here, receive this truth. Whatever you forbid on earth will be considered to be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you release on earth will be considered to be released in heaven. So. This is the concept of binding and loosing, okay? So bind literally means to forbid. I don't know if this is on your handout. No, I don't think okay, so. What was sorry. That yeah, I'll send it to you. I just decided to do it last minute. All right, so bind <laughs> means to forbid. Mm -hmm. To loose means to untie, mm -hmm. all right? So now I, I decided to look it up in the Webster's Dictionary. I was curious to see what it says. Web, Webster's Dictionary defines the word bind as to make secure by tying to confine. Mm -hmm to restrain as if with bonds, to constrain with legal authority, to exert a restraining or a compelling effort. All right, to arrest, to right. handcuff, to apprehend, to lock up and to ch take charge of. Yeah. So now when we have, when we are praying, and we're, we, we see like demonic activity, I'm like, we bind you in Jesus' name. We forbid you from speaking. We forbid you from being in operation. That's how we'll pray. And guess what? One time I had someone in the car, Bobby, would you know me? And so he was in the car with me. My son was an infant. He was about 18 months old. And he just started acting really crazy. I mean, he was going a little crazy. But anyway, I had music on and I happened to have a song that had to do with the blood of Jesus. Uh -huh. And it was just this really powerful song about the blood. And I was driving and he started like freaking out and acting really strange. And so in my mind, you know, I'm hearing the enemy say, He's going to put his hands out and he's going to choke you and you won't have any control because you're driving. Just, you know, you know how yeah. the enemy talks, yeah. right? And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I'm thinking, I'm looking at him like, stop it. You know, so then I said, listen, I bind you in Jesus name. I said, I forbid you from talking. And he looks at me and he goes, so my son was laughing in the back and he's going and he's shaking his head really violently the whole time but he couldn't speak wow. and, see, so and there's different right. instances in different circumstances like as you start to move and operate mm -hmm. this and it gives you your faith gets built up too yeah, because you start right, seeing yeah. like you better back down, Jack, because I can go to kick your butt. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have. I, I mean, I have seen a person manifest into like a cobra. I've seen. I mean, I just I tell you crazy stuff, and it's like, all right, it's you against them. It's your spirit and you against that thing, and it's like I am not backing down. Right. You better sit down in Jesus' name, and, and it's like this righteous anger when I tell you rises up that I'm going to go up to that thing and smack it upside their head. And, but, but oh, it gets God. so aggravated, you know, mm -hmm. and, but we have seen wild stuff. And so, but, but you, way, 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 way back, there was a person we brought to Peter's uncle and uh, he was a bodybuilder and he would work out for like four hours a day. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was chiseled when I tell you, he was a big dude. Right. And so, he would. He was into also black uh, belt. He was a black belt, but a, a sensei like a ninth degree or whatever the heck it was. And he had really demonic powers. Like he would mm -hmm. fight twenty people against him. Wow. Yeah. So and the fact that he wow. would beat them, you know, he had some demonic powers, right? Mm -hmm. We take him to get deliverance, and what happened was he. Um, we're we're sitting at the table, and I was a little reluctant to be in the room there, but he really wanted me there. He kept saying, "I really want you with me." I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> so we're in the room. And all of a sudden they start taking authority and they were really challenging him over things and taking authority over things. And he, he literally backed up, oh. went against the wall and like turned into the Hulk. Remember that movie, The Hulk? Yeah. Yeah. And he's taking his shirt of throwing and I'm like, oh, dear God. So I got my Bible and I'm like, 
I'm like ready. And I go to the back of the room. I was like chicken. And I'm like, and they're so they said, read Psalm 91. I'm like, he that dwelleth in his house. I mean, I'm all the way in the back. And I'm like, I am not going near him. You know, and, and they took authority over him. And, 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 you know, but then he calmed down. But we have learned since then how not even to allow that kind of manifestation. But we didn't know, you know. And so, I mean, I have seen some wild things. And another time when we were praying for someone, it was me and this other person in the room. And, um, you know, like now we know to to pray through the forgiveness and the bitter roots and break the inner vows. But I didn't know when I saw the heard the Holy Spirit said she's battling with an antichrist spirit. And when I said that, the person, the room became ice cold. Wow. And the person was a very attractive girl, literally turned into a monster. I mean, she came home and she wow. was coming over the table to come at me. And I'm like, oh my God. So I looked and I thought, oh my God, I could be home after my husband's safe and sound. <laughs> you know? So when she was coming at me, I heard the Holy Spirit say, I'm a very present help in time of trouble. And I slammed my hand on the table. And when I said that, something picked her up and I flung her back. And I mean, she started wigging out. And I'm like, okay, we're going to end this meeting right now. You know, because I, I was learning. Yeah. You know, and I didn't understand. So I did, I used to teach a class what not to do. In your deliverance <laughs> session, because I can save you a lot of problems. But but anyhow, but but see, but these people were desperate to get free. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so the Lord is teaching us, and now we've gotten better and better. We're constantly learning. We never arrive, but we're constantly learning how to how to really be precise and, and, and address that thing and, and cast it out of that individual. All right. And so like we do have forms that we, we have people fill out. And a lot of times it's really to trigger their remembrance, but we, you don't need a form when you're casting devils out. Right. You hear the spirit of the Lord and you use your word of knowledge and you hear what the spirit of God is saying, you take authority over it. That's, That's right. my favorite way of dealing with it. Mm -hmm. All right. So then in Matthew 16, 19, um, it says, oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. In Matthew 12, 29, it says here, who would dare enter the house of a mighty man and steal his property? This is still talking about binding and loosing. First, he must overpower and tie up by one who is stronger than he. Then his entire house can be plundered and every possession stolen. It's not in your hand now. But see, this is what I'm saying. We have the bind and loose here. I'll send it to you. Don't worry. And so... Um, we have to bind. So you're binding the effects of the enemy. You're forbidding that spirit. You're forbidding that thing in your home. You're forbidding um, whatever that that lie is that you're you're you know that you know the and the greatest warfare is the battlefield in our mind, and that's where we always have to counter it with the word, and we always have to have final say. Listen, I know, like you know, so when you're hearing that lie, it is so real. It, yeah. it, it's just right. you it's a part of you that i mean the enemy's yeah. good at what he does but that's where it's like no the word of god says this that's right. i mean everything in me at times is like oh my god i i, I, I feel so right but no if the word says it the word has final say right period right. that's where you get the greatest victory yeah. and then of course your worship and i'll talk about that in a minute but anyway so matthew 16 19 in the passion says i'll give you the keys of heaven's kingdom Realm to forbid. See, God is saying, listen, don't don't be striving over this stuff. I'm giving right. you this ability. I'm I want you to understand that you can bind and you can forbid, you can loose the Amen. then you, you lose the power, the presence of God. You free them from that of that stranglehold that the mm. enemies had on them. But God's saying, listen, I want you to have the keys. I want you to have the keys for breakthrough. I want you to have keys to bring yourself and your home and your in your neighborhood, your people into a place of freedom. That's All right. right. But that comes with intimacy with God. That's Amen. right. Amen. So he says, I, I'll give it. A, I'll read it again. I'll, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. Oh. Uh, I'll hit me. Well. I'll give you the keys of heaven's kingdom realm to forbid on earth what is forbidden in heaven and to release on earth what is released in heaven. Now, I wrote here, again, this is not on your um, <laughs> about a book called Pigs in the Parlor by Frank oh, and, uh, and uh, Ida May uh, Hammond. Frank and Ida May Hammond. And um, there, there are certain yeah. books that are classics that everyone should have, and that would be one of them. That was one of my first ones that I ever read, I think. There are some by Wynne Worley. 
and it's really, <laughs> really good, really foundational stuff. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and so in this book, he mentions, they mention seven areas that we need for delivery. That, that book really gives you the best understanding of schizophrenia, mm. of what it means to be double-minded, of how rebellion and rejection work in tandem. The Lord right. gave Ida May a download and understanding of that. And we are going to read you, not tonight, because it's just too much, but it's so good. And, and really, that is a book worth getting, okay? So here's what they said. And I mean, I've been doing this forever, but um, I just thought I, what would they say? Um, it says here, there are seven main issues that you know that, that like where the enemy will attack. Our emotional issue, yeah. you have mental issues, speech issues, like where people are talking very like angry or very or foul language, you know, sexual problems, addictions, physical infirmities, and religious error. All right. So we see that is so prevalent. I mean, it's always been a Lord have mercy. What's happening in our nation now? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh my yeah. Lord. I mean, crazy. Yes, I do. No. No, okay. Okay. Yes. Emotional issue, mental issues, speech issues or problems, sexual problems, addictions, physical infirmities, and religious error. Isn't she amazing? Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. No, I've um, met Trisha. She was talking, the first time I ever heard her speech, she was talking about going into New York City and preaching on Times Square and, and prophesying over people and witnessing they were getting saved and demons getting cast out. I'm like, man, how come nobody ever told me that was part of being a Christian? You know, like there's this really active aspect of being on the offensive against the devil. And we've had people over the years since we came out here, especially when we first came out here, question the theology about that. And is that really for today? And we made a decision not to try to argue about it. And just yeah. to say, look, if it's real, we'll find something to pray for them about, or we'll prophesy over them, or they'll, there'll be evidence that they'll see that this is real. Yeah. You don't really have to try to win an argument. You just have to walk in the power, yeah. and not in a spiteful way, because ultimately you want them all to be free. And people that underestimated spiritual warfare learned the hard way that it's very real, including a couple that went overseas to be missionaries and, and Trisha warned them and said you're not really ready for this and they did it anyway and then they called back up help we need help over here right so not saying it in any other way to, than to say we're here for a reason this is a big part of the reason that, that we're here today we're not just waiting to go to heaven when we die we're supposed to be you know, for this purpose the son of God was manifest that he would destroy the works of the devil Amen. We're his followers. We're right. his ambassadors. What Trisha's talking about is destroying the works of the devil. And I think right now, you just said we're on the one-year anniversary of the lockdown, right? This Sunday. Yeah. Would have been, really? yeah. It's yeah. been a year. People yeah. do not understand the impact it's been having on them. They know they're off kilter a little bit. Mm -hmm. But if ever there was a time this was needed, it's now, right? Yeah. So, like, yeah. take good notes and don't be so afraid that you don't have everything down pat he he rewards the diligent seeker right Amen. if you make yourself available don't get your ego in the way what if i look stupid he wants to use you as a vessel to pour his power through and nobody would choose to be bound once they taste what it's like to be free Amen. you don't ever want to go back to that okay so i think there's never been a riper season to try to help people get free than right now. So it's a very timely class, as it usually is. Sure. Uh, so emotional issue, mental issues. Well, they actually said mental, they said emotional problems, mental problems, speech problems, sexual problems, addictions, physical infirmities, and religious error. Got him. So um, yeah, you know this. There's so much suicide. We we heard. I we were. I was talking with someone, and and they said that um, they had they had actually increased the foot patrol, the police on bridges because of people jumping off bridges. Wow. Wanting to commit suicide. Kids, teenagers. 
are looking are, are committing suicide. We God did not create us to isolate, to be alone. And so, and then you have other issues on top of that of abuse and all this other kind of stuff. I'll give you like certain keys that that you always have to do when you're ministering to someone that needs a devil cast out of them, or even for yourself. See, like I encourage everybody to, to go through it yourself. <clears throat> you know, we're going to have, and I'm just going to mention this. If you're not signed up to, to go to Mark, Mike Hutchins, that's going to be here. He, I'm on the board with him. Uh, we're on the International Society of Deliverance Ministers, and he's he's wonderful. I mean, he really has a download on, on addressing PTSD and trauma. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I mean, it's just amazing. And, and he's, he's, he's really anointed. So that's going to be on, I think it's March 13th. So if you're not coming, try to come. We are going to have it online as well, but please you know, try to make it because it's going to be great. He's going to pray for people, but on a Sunday he'll minister. He's only going to pray for, he said, uh, the military police and I think frontline workers, right, Peter? I don't remember him restricting. Yeah, I think he did on Sundays. Anyway, all right. So now I'm going to shift over to, you know, I was? What would be the seven problems? Okay, so in the book, in the Frank Cammons book, uh, Pigs in the Parlor, they mention seven areas that, that you need ministry in. And so that's really all it is. And so, um, I, I am going to teach on that a little bit. So we have a spirit, soul, and body. And I'm sure most of you know, but in case you know, I'm going to share. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23, the Amplified, it says, May the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through, separate you from profane things, make you pure and wholly consecrated to God, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved sound and complete and found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah. Now, our soul, and as you know, is our mind, will, and emotion. That's the part that's not born again, as you know. Our soul has to be transformed transformed by renewing of our mind through the word of God yes. and our, our, you know, has to be submitted to God. Okay. Yes. So, um, uh, James four, seven says, submit to God and then you can resist the devil and he will flee. Right. So we have to have an understanding of the word, you know, like we'll see people in church and just, there's, you can just see a religious spirit on them. Okay. Right, you know, right, you right. just know that they're, they're struggling there. And it's that intellectual mindset. You're just going through, the, the the motion and it's just like wanting to be very combative mm-hmm. or just always want to intellectualize things. Listen, God is the spirit. Yeah, the right. Bible says in Isaiah, his ways are above our ways, his thoughts are above our thoughts, right? So God, it, it's not an intellectual understanding. It would submit to the spirit of God to understand, to get a download. Yeah. And isn't that how we pray? Isn't that how yeah. we get understanding? Yeah. So that's what's really important here. So listen to James 121. I love this scripture. It says, So get rid of all uncleanness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness, and in a humble, gentle, modest spirit, receive and welcome the word of God. Hear it. Welcome the word of God. Not not argue about the word. Welcome the word, which implanted and rooted in your hearts contains the power to save your soul. The word can save your soul. Yes, that's right. The revelation of the word yes. saves yes. your soul. Yes. That's how important the word is. Yeah. And I shared that time when I was ministering, when I had that vision, when the word said that when he, the angels came in the room, we're thrusting our, 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 our abdomen, our emotions with the sword of the spirit. Hebrews 4.12, and he said the family of the word is over. Because the enemy knows there's no way we can fight the enemy if we don't know what's in the word. We don't know what our rights are. Right. Sure. So he loves to take people into captivity. Right. So there's a spirit of captivity. There's a spirit of bondage yeah. that we have to address with people. Yeah. And so it keeps them lo- in lockdown. Yeah. And, and they're, they're not free to move in what God has for them. Because the enemy is afraid of us operating in a destiny that God has called us yeah. operating. Right. 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 He doesn't want us operating in fullness. He doesn't yeah. care if you go to church 15 times a week. That's right. Right. He can care less. Yeah. He cares if you're walking in freedom of yes. Christ. Yes. That's what he wants. That's what he doesn't want. So obviously our spirits are immediately born again. Yeah. We're heirs of Christ. But now the soul realm is what has to get renewed. The soul realm is what has to get <clears throat> submitted to God and surrendered. Right. All right. So in our emotions, we can be blocked, as you know, with the spirit of anger, rage. You know, a lying spirit, 
bitterness, lust, that's in that area, all right? And we command, we can command these spirits and our emotions to go. That's and so, true. but here's the thing. We have to come out of agreement with it. So a lot of times yeah. the enemy's lying to us and we feel that we have, you know, because, yeah. you know, what, what do we say all the time? I feel, I feel, I feel. Well, you feel like you're, you're, you have no strength. You feel like you, you cannot have breakthrough. Well, the Lord is saying you can, first of all, we have to come out of agreement. Say, I break, like you can break a yeah, salt tie. I come out of agreement with the spirit. I, I sever my ties with you. Right. You are no longer in control over my life. See, we have great authority, but the enemy knows if you don't believe it. See, and that's where you have to just say, no, wait a second. You have no right because I'm an heir of Christ. And here's what the word says. I have the mind of Christ. And become one with the word and really recognize the power that's in that. Okay. So now here are certain things that I'll, I'll mention. Like that, I know that uh, a lot of times when we're dealing in deliverance, the spirits can lodge in. Okay, mm -hmm. so they lodge in our emotions, but they can also lodge in your body. There are spirits that can lodge in your organs, right? So, like for example, bodies can indwell. I mean, spirits can uh, indwell in bodies and consider it their home because they want it to be their home. All right. So, for example, stubbornness and rebellion can lodge in your neck and shoulders. Now, if you have neck and shoulders issue, doesn't mean you're battling with rebellion, so be careful. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you have that, it could be you heard of, you heard of stiff neck people, yeah. wow. right? Yeah. Jude yeah. talks about the neck you can't turn. Yeah. So a lot of times when you're battling with that, there's more, there's there's an issue here. It doesn't always have to be, but it can be, okay? And then you have spirits of lust and perversion. A lot of times, or even witchcraft. I would tell the people, shake your hands, just shake your hands, mm. you know, because any, any place or any body that I mean, I'm sorry, uh, it, it's a spirit of lust and perversion, but also witchcraft is another thing that you can tell them to shake their hands, but that can dwell, they can dwell in your eyes, your hands, your abdomen, or any part of your body that's yielded to sexual sin. Mm. They, they can lodge there. So when, when I'm taking this art and I'm praying for someone who's struggling with pornography or some kind of sexual sin, you know, I, I'll tell, I can tell them if the spirit leads, not always, but witchcraft, I told them to shake it off, shake your hand, shake it off. Because a lot of times they lodge there. All right. Yeah. Um, pride can lodge in your back and spine. Now the Kundalini spirit that comes from yoga, I mean, yoga, yeah, yoga, uh, that, that lodges in your spine. When we were in Brazil ministering, oh my gosh, so many people were, were manifesting and writhing on the floor like snakes. And one of the main things that we were dealing with was the Kundalini spirit, because a lot of them were involved in yoga, and it was all wrapped in your spine, creating oh, wow. such pain. Oh, and David, wow. you have a testimony over that when the spirit was cast out of you. I do. Back hurt. I do hurt. with yoga, yeah, specifically. Why don't you come up? Can you come up? Yeah. And it's funny because people go to yoga to help their backs. Yeah. 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 yeah, I I was uh, into yoga about 10 years ago before I really learned about it. I just come to, to, to serve the Lord and I was doing yoga. I was really into fitness, but I always had back problems. I was in the best shape of my life, but I always had back problems. And so Jeremy was a good friend of mine and, and I just started explaining to him. And he was like, dude, because you're doing yoga. And he explained to me how this, that, that, that spirit, that Python spirit coils itself around your spine because yoga is actually when you, when you, when you're performing the position, it's actually a, uh, a, a, a position of worship to that specific spirit and so yeah so there was a, an expert guru or, or whatever it was that he was teaching on this and he said like he actually gave me the image of this of the spirit and and so what, whatever I, I i renounced it and i prayed against it and then the next day my back was healed Amen. right Amen. so get this you know weeks go by and i'm still into fitness and i'm feeling fine and i kind of back and I went back into doing yoga and then like a couple of days later the back problems came back wow. I was like wow this is real and then I renounced it again prayed against the spirit and I cast the spirit out myself I came against it myself and I commanded it to leave me and my back was healed so two times two times and yeah so it's real wow yeah so um anyway so you know, they can watch anywhere they want, okay? And so, but we have, we have the power and the authority 
to take it out. Now again, remember the enemy is a liar. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't prepared to share this. So I was actually going to a chiropractor, and the chiropractor took uh, he took an X-ray of my spine, and he said, "David, your spine is literally shaped like a snake. It's wow. twisted like a snake." Yeah. Wow. Hey, more. Wow. Yeah. Hey, more. I'm telling you, and I mean, you, you want to get in a fight with someone, tell them that they shouldn't do yoga. Oh, Jesus. That's true. Oh, my God. So true. Yeah. So true. yeah. Because everyone, is your baby little kids in school. Yeah. 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 Right? But see, when we have a phenomenal DVD that we would have people at 55 minutes, and the people who do yoga, are living with the Christians who say, well, we can do it's Christian yoga. Oh, no yeah. way. Yeah. You're, you're submitted right. to that deity. Uh-huh. Right. And so there's wow. you cannot, there's there's this, you can't do yoga wow. apart from the spirit realm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, it's a fabulous DVD if any of you want to see it. Yeah. But um, but it gives you tremendous information of all these people mm-hmm. that actually the, the one yogi who was um worked with the Beatles, who's now born again. I mean, he really goes into detail as to the open door, and, and pretty much everybody does it. And um, it's not, you see, Derek Prince, who also wrote amazing books on deliverance and selling yeah. demons, and actually you can Google him and, and get some good information, but he used to be a yogi teacher, a yogi, oh, wow. and he taught it for 25 years. And he said, every position that you're doing, you are worshiping, worshiping God. God. Wow. All right? Wow. So, so lift weights. Yeah, exactly. Do something else. Yeah. What is, what's the name of what she uh, I don't Bad remember. Um, <laughs> but I, I'll email it to you. Hey, Cindy, Cindy, if you're watching, do you know what the uh, DVD's name is? I can look it up. I can look it up when the class is over with because I know where to go. Okay. All right. It's Cindy, Yoga you know Uncoiled. Yoga Uncoiled. Yoga Uncoiled. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> All right, so now, now, now I'm going to read these scriptures, and you know why we have got to really get proficient in this. All right, in First Timothy four, in the Amplified, verse four, it says, "The Holy Spirit distinctly and expressly declares that in latter times some will turn away from the faith, giving attention to deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach through the hypocrisy and pretensions of a liar whose conscience are seared or cauterized." So that word seared there means to make callous or unfeeling. Wow. They have withdrawn in their hearts to become callous or unfeeling. This is end times. This is where we're at now. This is wow. what's going on. And then in 2 Timothy 3, 1 and 5, in the New Living, it says the dangers of the last day. And, and it says here, Timothy, that in the last days will be very difficult times. Your people will love only themselves and their money. Yeah. <laughs> they will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God. What did Naylor say about Nadler? He said, we, we, don't, we don't want God or we don't care. It's this is no, 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 there's no place for God in Congress. Uh-huh. Lord, we rebuke that. That's That's right. Right. See, but this is what I'm talking about. This end times, it says here, they will be boastful and proud, yeah. scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful. Yeah. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. Sounds like the media would slander. Yeah. Yeah. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends. They will be reckless, be puffed up with pride, love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. Yeah. Wow. This is end times. All right. And so now we have a hope in that because Jesus, we have resurrection life. And Jesus came to set the captive free. He knows the end from the beginning. Right. He's Amen. not shocked by any of this. He That's warned right. us about it. That's right. So he warned us about it. So we are we know how to address these yeah. things. Okay. That's right. And that our spirit man is built up, that we go through our own deliverance, that we understand mm-hmm. what's at hand here. Now in Hebrews 5:14 in the Passion, it says here, uh, but solid food is for the mature, whose spiritual senses perceive heavenly matters. And they have been adequately trained by what they've experienced to emerge with an understanding of the difference between what is truly excellent and what is evil and harmful. Another version says we have to learn to discern. We have to exercise to learn to discern between good and evil. 
All right, we have to discern what's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, a person could be around you or be in church. Mm -hmm. They look good. They're worshiping. You're praying in the spirit, and they are the devil themselves. Mm -hmm. You have to discern in here. Yeah. Now, you don't want to be in a witch hunt either. But right. you know, when you're around people yeah. and they're like, there's just something about them, you can't yeah. put your finger yeah. on yeah. exactly. it. They just give you the budget, you know? And so, whenever I kind of, when I, when I didn't pay attention to it, that's when I got in trouble. Yeah. And they caused a lot of problems. Wow. Now it's like, yeah, that's when good. I sense that, it's like, over here. Yeah. Really have a talk. No, but I, I asked, how do I deal with this? Because listen, the Lord still wants that individual to get turned around. Amen. There's always a hope, but you have to watch. You have to be an alert watchman. Yeah. And you know, not just all of you in church or someone says, well, they're just clapping their hands and worshiping. I don't care. The devil's Bible says in James knows the scriptures yes, yeah. and they're fearful yes. of it. Yes. Right. They have more of a fear of the word sometimes than most of people about a fear of God. Yeah, that's right. And so that's why we again we have to understand that, that God wants us to discern and to ask him, not just for devil, but discern right. the angelic. That's right. To discern the spirit realm, to right. understand good from evil. Now, the other thing I want to say about spirits is a lot of times you can smell a demon. Yes. Oh, that's so they, they, they're unclean. They stink. You can, like, and yes. sometimes they smell like sulfur. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but there's been times that a person will come up and it's like, or, or we would be worshiping in church and I would smell the smell and try yes. to see who that was. Wow. Nobody here. Nobody here. <laughs> Nobody here. And it's not about taking a shower. Yeah. Let me tell you. So, you know, and when I discern that and I'm thinking, okay, Lord, so, and, and how do you want me to handle this? Yeah. How can I approach that individual? Now, not everyone is your responsibility either. Right. Oh, right. Not every situation yeah. you encounter is yours to call or oh, yours right. to take on. Right. I've gotten in a lot of trouble with that. I asked the Holy Spirit first, what do I do? Uh -huh. Do I say anything to that person or not? How do I handle this, Lord? Yeah. Always dialogue with Holy Spirit. Always. So, because not everyone, you know, but but I'll tell you, oh, Jesus, yep. there is a scent. Just like you can smell the fragrance of heaven. Yeah. 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 You smell the just beautiful fragrance yeah. of flowers oh, where you're worshiping. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. a beautiful yeah. aroma. Yeah. Yeah. You, you'll discern that as well. Yeah. Right? So, anyhow, so so there, there are keys here, and, and I'm going to go over them very quickly before we close tonight. Um, and then if you have any questions, please, please feel free to ask. But I just want to just say something about leadership. You know, for some of us who've been saved a gazillion years, we've been in churches and we've been in places where um, there's been abuse of, 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 of leadership, right? right? And, and controlling leadership or just, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And so um, I know for the longest time, I was reluctant to really even address certain things because I just didn't want people to think I was trying to control them. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very unhealthy not to have strong leadership, not to have people that's going to guide you in truth and lead you, right? right? So we have to speak the truth in love. We have to tell you, no, that's not right. what I'm hearing. Now, I can't force it. I can't. It's not a dictatorship. Right. You know, you're not going to be cursed. But, you know, like these people that, that went to Africa, it wasn't that I just said, you know, there's a problem here. Like I had said to the one individual, I said, you're, you're going to Africa and you're dealing with some intense occult spirits out there. I said, what's going to happen? I said out there, you know, when people usurp authority, because that's all you do here. Oh. I said, because you're going to reap what you sow. Oh, that is you don't, you don't respect authority. You're not, you're not honorable to authority. That's trying to help you. Mm -hmm. How do you think you're going to handle it out there? Well, let me tell you, I got calls from all over the world. Help us. Not on, I mean, it was very, 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 very difficult what they went through. And they came back and humbled themselves and okay. repented. Wow. And God used their mind, wow. you know. But see, we have to be careful. You know, a lot of times people will say, Well, I heard God. Well, God will confirm it. Yeah. Right. And so you have leadership here that's there to help you. Not hinder you. That's right, why you have right. to, you know, be in relationship with your leadership. It's not, not to hurt you, right. but it's like, okay, if you're so confident in God, then he'll confirm it, yeah. right? Yeah. 
So anyway, so here's what uh, like submitting to leadership is to, to like a, to be aligned. Let's put it that way: to be aligned with someone that you're in relationship with. An apostolic ministry, you know, it's more about relations being relationship based, not the dictatorial. Yeah, that's good. Mm. All right, there's a difference here. Yeah. All right, so you, you, there's a submission. There's an attitude of respect yeah. of, of of just even even dialoguing with the person. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know we'll have people that you know they're they're supposedly they're connected here. They're yeah. off doing their thing, going here and there, and starting this and starting that, and never even having a conversation with us. Wow, you know, I mean that's that's not that's not respectful. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. right, and it's like, well, and then things are going wrong, and it doesn't mean things are going to go wrong either. But it's just that, like, if you're you're saying you're in alignment here, yeah. if I'm in alignment here, I'm in connection. Right, I'm in connection. Wouldn't you want to talk about it? Like, yeah. just say, hey, I mean, I do that. I run it by, you know, like we're connected with Chuck Pierce and John Cheryl and other leaders. You know, I run everything. I say, hey, you know, that's what I'm thinking about. What do you, what do you guys think? Yeah. Well, wait and pray. There were things that I, I had run by Chuck that I really felt was a war, and Chuck said, no, <clears throat> wait. I'm not going to usurp that. I'm going right. to wait mm-hmm. because you know I look at it as my protection. Because yeah, right. right. Lord knows He's not a you know, control freak or anything like that. It's, yeah, right. you know, you just want to have dialogue. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. And uh, so anyway, um, so we, we all, when I say obey, because that's what the scripture says in Hebrews 13, we obey yeah. those that, that are in authority. In other words, not like words like, yes, ma'am, you know, like, like you can't make a move without, uh, you know, your leadership. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's more of, a, a, you know, just connection. And, mm-hmm. and the Bible says, um, I wrote the scripture out, in Hebrews 13, it's at Hebrews 13, 17, obey your spiritual leaders and recognize their authority, for they do keep watch over your soul without, I can't understand my handwriting, without something, without, anyway, without something. And since they will, what? Yeah, since they will have to give an account to God for your work. So it will benefit you when you make, their work a pleasure and not a heavy burden. So in other words, we dialogue with it. Now in deliverance, you want to be commissioned in this. You want to have your people that you're aligned with. Well, I'm just doing whatever I want because God told me. I don't advise that. Especially in deliverance. You know, just say, hey, this is what I'm thinking of doing. There's a bunch of people here. Just pray. Would you pray and agree with me? Absolutely. Listen, the reason why we're teaching is so that we all operate and heal the sick, cleanse the leper, cast out the devil, raise the dead. And that's a commission for all of us. To do. Yeah, but we want to be aligned. We want people praying. Yeah. If you're going to go and do something, let's know about it. It's not like, yeah. well, I don't, I don't know. No, we want to help you. you yeah. know, that's right. That's right. where we're at. Right. So anyway, yeah. so we want that that alignment, that submission. So what's spiritual authority? It's, it's a spiritual yeah. man has authority with God over men. God has called us to be, uh, you know, overseers here. Yeah. It's not kiss the ring. It's not, <laughs> you know, the tears. There's a big difference between that, okay? Yeah. It's honor and respect, mutual respect for each other, yeah. okay? So in essence, it's a heart of, it's an attitude of heart yeah. that gives respect to authority. Yeah. It's just the courtesy of, of dialoguing, of talking to that yeah. individual, okay? So enough said about that, all right? Not quite enough. <laughs> so this is part of the kingdom vision versus just the local church vision. So if you've been following Chuck at all, that's really ramping up into a higher level now that we have to think more kingdom. And local church is amazing. We should all want to support the local church. But what you'll notice is because of just that pastoral model was the only thing that was ever understood before we came into Ephesians 4, 11, and 12, apostle, prophet, evangelist, yeah, pastor, right. teacher, right? Yeah. And the pastor was really the main thing. And then, of course, evangelist was recognized, but apostle, prophet was not really recognized. So that created a lot of pastors in positions where intercessors would come into their church and have this really strong prophetic gift and want to pray, and that that gift was not recognized. Ah, so right. these people that were really spiritually in tune were hurt and wounded. Yeah. And then when they would yeah. come to a conference here and they'd come in expecting to be shamed. And we didn't want to shame them, but they just had a, a bit of a an edge that, you know, from all the wounding that they had. Yeah. That they, they didn't feel celebrated in yes. their gift. And, and we have to all repent for that, right? Yeah. Because the church hasn't recognized people's gifts. And and they just got used to being shamed and, and labeled as Jezebels. And they weren't Jezebels. 
themselves. They were just people that were hearing from the Lord and maybe didn't exactly present it the right way or not. But you know, the thing about leadership is to protect you. Right. And you know, I remember as a worship leader in the prior church, we, we were praying for more musicians and one came in and he was playing and he was really good, but he wouldn't follow instructions. <laughs> and it wasn't because he wasn't a good player. It was just because, you know, worship is it's not easily identifiable. You know, you know, the, the way the geese fly, it's in a V and there's a reason for that. The one that's in the front is taking all the resistance, but everybody else is drafting behind that. Yeah. Right, so yeah. it's easier for the ones that are following. They might want to go that direction, yeah. but you have to follow the leader. Right? You'll get your chance, yeah. you know. Yeah. Don't worry, the day will come and you can yeah. drive the bus yourself. But until then, yeah. right. you just live within this authority of I'm here, not for you know. I do have a vision, but right now my vision is submitted yeah. to yours. Yeah. And God will promote you yeah. faster if yeah. you're willing to serve under yeah. someone else. Yeah. It's right in the Bible. Yeah. You don't get authority unless you're under yeah. it. Yeah. Now. Again, we've all probably seen ways that that was abusive, right? Yeah. That's yeah. a shame. But they're going to be accountable for that. We pray for them, right? That's up. That's between them and God. And you weren't. You don't have to think. Well, I wasted all that time. You did. It. You were serving God, yeah. okay? So whether the, the people recognize it or not yeah. is not the issue. And sometimes when people come across, you know, strong, like, I have a word and I'm going to give it whether you like it or not. They just haven't. Then love, you know, and once you love them, that package softens up and, and you don't have to just shame people, right? Yeah. You have to right. pull rank on them. Again, which they shouldn't cause disruption or all those things, but it doesn't take long to see if they're willing to be teachable and you work with them. Half the time, nobody ever even tried. You just labeled them and told them this is a, this place isn't for you. So really, we've been told over the years that the culture feels very welcoming and loving. And that's not because we can force that. It's just got to be that you all feel like yeah. you can grow. Yeah. Right? So that's the, let, let's all be good fertilizer and help people grow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. So now I promise you, I will email you this information. I did not put this on your hand. All right. So what, all right. So I want to talk about some open doors in Monday and before we close. Okay. So um, what, so we have, bunch of them all right so we have adulthood activities all right so this is the obvious all right active participation in sin all right and you know if you were you know really um abusing alcohol drugs sexual sin cult involvement there are all doorways for demons to enter now again if you've never been through deliverance you really need to go through it all right so now what are some other ways um books literature music movies Certain kinds of music. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, I know there's some rap music out there that is pure yeah. the mom. Yeah. 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 Sex, yeah. using the F word. I mean, just yeah. disgraceful yeah. music. Really yeah. disgraceful. And um, I'm telling you, it, you can open yourself up. Certain kinds of media and entertainment provides avenues for demons to enter. Calls it in occult readings. Look, look at all these kids were reading Harry Potter stuff. Yeah. And uh, just, I mean, whatever it is, you know. Porn, yeah. literature, all that kind of stuff opens you up to the spirit. You know, the enemy, it's like you're you're being lured with a hook. And you're thinking, oh, it's just, oh, don't be a yeah. yeah. don't be a fanatic. Yeah. No, no, you're, oh, the enemy knows. Right. He knows the hook. There was the person I ministered to that loved a certain group. And um, mm -hmm. it, it turned out that uh, this group, <laughs> the leader was into the occult, made no bones around about it. I uh, think it's Fleetwood Mac. And uh, love Stevie Nicks. And um, well, we had to break the soul tie. There was such a strong soul tie with that music. And, and that kept her bound. And we cast a demon out of her. She got set free. Because of her alignment and allegiance to that, to that thing. Wow. I'm telling you, it's powerful. So, so we had books and literature. You know, go through your home. Wow. And, and do a cleansing yeah. in your home because sometimes you have stuff in your house and you don't even recognize that's not God, of God that yeah. can open up doors for a demonic um, uh, attack in your home. All right, so childhood. Now that's where most most spirits entered in yes. in, in childhood. Yes. All right, so you know, <clears throat> excuse me, majority of spirits. I, I just said that people who are involved in open sin for demonic attack to um, oh, in other words, no. 
When um, parents are in sin, yeah. when there's a lot of violence in the home, yeah. when they're sexual, when they're talking filthy, or you know whatever kind of junk in the home, or that's an open door to your kids. Mm, right. You know we have a responsibility yeah. as parents yeah. and, and to watch how we treat our kids and watch what we're saying, watch what's going on in our home, watch yeah. which you know that you're you're showing with your releasing in your your uh, home, and so demons can enter in through the wall. And then, of course, you know, generationally, they can enter in that. Any kind of abuse, any kind of trauma, there's an open door for that, all right? So curses, that now yeah. curses provide a legal ground yeah. for demons to operate in your bloodline, bloodline yeah. of your family. Yep. Yeah. And so uh, one, of the, one of the teachings, one of the segments is going to be on generational curses. Now, listen, if you ever want to read a really good book on uh, curses, is by Derek Prince. He wrote one of the best books I've ever read called Blessings and Curses by Derek Prince. And I'll go over that a little bit tonight, but that's one of the best books and is really worth getting. All right. So you have curses that, that can cause issues in the family. Like, for example, you know, when you go to a doctor, they want to know, all right, is there any kind of cancer in your family? Any kind, I mean, they even know about it. Heart issues. Is there any kind of, you know, eye issues, whatever it is? Well, we do the same thing. You have any kind of divorce? Is there any kind of sexual issues? Is there any kind of you know barrenness in your family? Is there any kind of you know anger issues, violent issues, any of this kind of stuff in your family? Like you see the pattern. Well, everybody in my family is divorced. Everybody in my family has this kind of an illness. See, you know, you'll identify that. And again, you're you're like you become a spiritual sleuth. Holy Spirit will start showing you things, and it's not like you have to dredge everything up. The Holy Spirit will show you. But like you start practicing in your own family with your own life, mm -hmm. right? And you, and you see what, what could possibly be there. Doesn't mean it's a spirit, right? Mm -hmm. So, but but then if it is, you cast them out. Like we always say, we don't counsel spirits; we cast them out. Right. Mm -hmm. right. We're not right. therapists. Right. Mm -hmm. you know? right. We, we right. deal with spirits. We cast it out, mm -hmm. and you know, and uh, we'll help yeah. you walk through. We'll help you navigate through something. But but we don't coddle demons. That's right. Hey, That's right. That's right. That's right. So uh, the other way that, that there's an open door to the demonic is through passivity, mind control, and domination. Anything that encourages a blank mind, like the new age, you know, you're going to sit there and do the, um, you know, that, all that kind of stuff. Wow. You have to make no system. All that. That's just nonsense. It is. You know, you're just blanking out your mind. One time I was, I thought I was going to an exercise class and, and you know, it's before I was safe. So it was kind of a yoga thing that I thought I was going to. And so they were like really into this uh, new age thing. And so they had candles all lit and everybody, they had to bring their own mat. And the guy that happened to be across from me had a diaper on, like a diaper on. He had like this thing on his head. And I had my Cuban girlfriend with me, Grisha, come on, we're kissed though. We're going to the clubs, we're partying, you know? And I looked at the people, I couldn't look at her because I just thought I'm gonna lose my marbles here. I just, so I'm trying to be really serious, and they're all mm, they're doing their thing. So, so you know, there's a move that you have to do. You know, you're laying on your stomach and you have to grab your ankles and rock. So I happened to look up at this guy. He was so tall and lanky, and he couldn't get his foot. And I lost it. And I was prostrate, hysterical laughing. I just, I mean, I was crying. They threw me out. <laughs> So I'm outside and I'm on top of my car and so I'm like, you know, they you know, pull the windows down. And I said, oh my God, next time I'll make sure I know where I'm going. So my, my girl's like, Risha, what kind of a place are you bringing me to? Like, I didn't know it was this kind of a place, you know? I wasn't cut out for that stuff. But anyway, thank God. <laughs> the other thing that opens up the door to this is tragedies, accidents, and yeah. trauma, any kind of trauma. Yeah. Yeah. Trauma doesn't yeah. mean that you have to be like in the war. Trauma yeah. could be falling down a flight of stairs that could open something up. Wow. Or you have a spirit of trauma in there that after you had that accident or after you had that operation, you're not the same. Yeah. Could be wow. a spirit. Yes. yes. Wow. Doesn't have to be. Yeah. But it could be. Yes. If you're doing everything and you're not getting results. And the other thing I want to say, a lot of times. You know, with deliverance, um, like if you um, are struggling with something, you're praying, you're worshiping, you're meditating on the word, you're not getting yeah. freedom. Most often it's a demon. Maybe about, mm -hmm. I don't know, 10, 12, 15 years ago, yeah. I was struggling I, and, and 
you know, I had battled with a lot of fear and panic attacks and depression. And um, I was just really struggling. It, like I was doing great for a while, then something just surfaced. I don't know why. And I, I was doing everything I could. I mean, I really was praying and fasting. And I came into the office. I said, Easter, I have a devil and you need to cast it out. She just looked at me. I said, it's a spirit of depression and you need to cast this thing out of me. And you, I think Cindy was there too. And she did. And it came out. And I was fine after that. So, you know, then you normal depression. But this was intense. You know, you know, you know, you know what I mean. Like, not all stuff that comes against you. But I was like, oh my God, I can't take this. I said, I need freedom. So she's like, Okay. <laughs> I got the people like right now, pass the spirit out. I'd rather be free and have a demon yeah. and, and, and pretend, oh, well, I'm leaving here. I can't have it. Are you kidding me? I want freedom. So, the other thing is um, that we want to deal with a lot of times you can have soul ties, right? Yeah. I'm going to say it like this with spirits. But we have soul ties. Now, there, when you have sexual sin, Sin at sex outside of marriage causes forms a ungodly soul tie. Right? That where when we pray, we, we call it with like fragments of their soul goes with that individual. We have to call it back and you have to make it right so that you're holy and their bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have prayed for people that because of sexual partners, the demons that were in that person went into them. Oh. And we have had to take authority. I remember one, Cindy and I were praying for one person one time, and we were at a ministry, you know, I think it was down the shore someplace, and um, this man's voice comes out of this woman, and he happened to be in the occult. You know, I mean, we wow. have, I mean, you have no idea. See, God is trying to protect us from yes. this stuff. Yes. 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 So, you know, even when couples get married, see, now when you're in covenant and you're married, that's different. Okay. Because that's how God designed it. But if you had sex before you got married, you still need to break a soul time, yeah, even right. though you're now in covenant with that individual. Mm -hmm. All right. So you have to, so that's really important to understand that you can have a soul tie that is uh, where you have a controlling relationship that's very controlling and manipulative. You need to break soul ties. You know, sometimes you see with, with very controlling mothers or fathers or, or, or people in your lives that it's just unhealthy or or what do you call that? Um, codependent things. You have to cut salt ties because right. it's not healthy. All right. Not that you're, you're you know, hating the individual or anything, but there's such a strong, demonic, manipulative tie that needs to be addressed. Okay. So, ungodly. Yes. Um, does that happen as well with, uh, forget about the sex part, even with just dating? I feel like sometimes when I've mentioned teenagers and all that, they go to date and they date another person and they date another person and break out with this one and break up with this one and break up with this right. one. And then eventually when they get to get married with someone, they, they don't trust that person right. and all that because I feel like they left pieces of their soul well, they everywhere. they can have emotional soul ties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm asking you. But, but the way you pictured it, I wish I could find this one teaching this guy did, the most amazing teaching, and he had all different people come up on the platform. Peter Horner. Peter Horner. And um, so, like, you know, when, when you have sex with an individual, right, so, you know, like, I can have 10 people up here, and unless those soul ties are broken, so let's say you and this person are getting married, but you think it's just the two of you, you've got a whole group of people there spiritually that are involved with you. And that's why we have to break sexual soul ties. It's so important because God, we're, 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 we're created in his image. We become one with that individual. Yeah. And so it's very important that soul ties are broken. And that's what causes a lot of relationship issues in marriages because of the soul ties that have never been addressed. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's a whole, um, whole teaching that, that will be taught. And um, that's really awesome. The other thing that we have to recognize is, I mean, addresses occult bondages. Now, a lot of times people innocently play Ouija boards, mm -hmm. horoscope, palm reading. You have to renounce all of that. That's an open door, open door. I dealt with someone one time that I said, hey, I said, I don't know, I just keep getting a strong witchcraft spirit. Have you ever played with a Ouija board? And I said, no, no. Oh, wait, maybe, yeah, like one time, maybe. 
she, then she goes, oh. And so when, when I start to take authority over, of course, like the voice, uh, her head starts spinning. And her voice turned into a man's voice. Then she says, oh my God, I realize I played with the Ouija board over a hundred times. Oh, wow. See, a lot of times what happens, the enemy gets you to forget. You'll forget yeah. that you yeah. did these things. Yeah. And I'm like, 100 times. One time, she said to me. Anyway, she got set free. So, Ouija board, tarot cards, horoscope, tea leaf readings, you know, drugs is pharmacia, open up the door, you know, there's an open door, black magic, new age, you know, there's there's brujeria, there's uh, macumba, there's santeria. There's all that stuff. That's wicked stuff. Yeah. And we have had to really pray through stuff because generationally, that individual may not have done it. But if your family, we've dealt with people that were brought to um, meetings in Santeria where they're doing all their thing there and the kids were just there. Mm -hmm. They never participated. Mm -hmm. and, and we've had to go through some major deliverances for them. It's very important. So that will be a whole nother class, a whole nother session that we'll, we'll really get into. But it's, you have to ask, like, if, if you have been involved in any of that, even innocently, you know, you're on the boardwalk, or you had your farm rent, mm -hmm. I used to love all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to renounce everything. Mm -hmm. Break soul ties with that stuff. You know, mm -hmm. I, well, it was awesome. So anyway, <laughs> so demons are discerned, you know, or so, all right. So now, a lot of times when, let's say you're praying for yourself, or if you're going to pray for an individual, right, mm -hmm. and um, you're starting to recognize that there's a spiritual thing going on there, you start praying. Well, a lot of times what happens, how that person can manifest is sometimes they'll start feeling nauseous when you're praying for them. Sometimes they'll feel like they're getting choked. Sometimes there's sudden pain. Sometimes they'll, they'll start, you know, I, I've had people when I was praying for them, they want to get up and run out of the room. Like one guy ran, he, we were praying, Easter, you were in that room with me. I, I'm in front. This guy was in such high level of cult. And I kept saying to him, are you sure you're telling me the truth that you're not in sin? Yeah. I'm like, okay, I didn't believe him. I thought he's lying to me. No, 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 everything's cool. Everything's good. So I'm sitting in front of him. He's over here. Their pastors are here. And I said, okay. So I, I, I said, in the name of Jesus, I'm taking authority over certain spirits. This guy literally looked like his mouth on hinge and starts roaring. Oh. I mean, right? It was intense. And I'm like, listen, you. He, so, like, I came up to his belly button. You know? <laughs> well, he all of a sudden keeps doing one of these things that, I mean, there was such a power encounter, right? Oh he got up, took off, knocks the one person off the chair, oh goes God. running out. And that spirit in him wanted to hit, get, let him get hit by a car. Oh, and I'm like on a porch, get him back in the house here. <laughs> so I said, so I said to this pastor, go get him. So he gets back in the house. And he said, he said he had never met Christians that had power. Oh, wow. wow. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they're involved in such a crazy high level of cult stuff. And sure enough, he was sleeping with his girlfriend. He wasn't telling the truth. I knew he was lying. So anyway, so, but he ran out of the room. See, Jesus came to set the captives free. Amen. We have, we all have that authority. Amen. And when you're in the area and you're, you know, like, I mean, his, I said to him, so how was, what was your life? What was the life with your mom? And I'm not laughing. It's just, you know, you're like, you have to keep a straight face. He said, oh, my mom used to ride down the stairs like a snake in the morning. Whoa. Oh, okay. <laughs> My mom too. <laughs> you know, but I mean, this is some of the things you start hearing, you know, like, oh my gosh, you know. But that was a wild one. So anyway, so sometimes they have this urge to leave or they start spitting, burping, you know, or uh, you know, yawning, exhaling, you know, we start praying and all these crazy things are happening. So so it's not uncommon for that. A lot of times, you know, people their eyes will roll back or they act like they're asleep. Or that they pass out, or they're like, you know, you're reading the scriptures, like they look like they're dead. Wow. No, that's a spirit that doesn't want you to deal with him. Right, so these right. are different yeah. ways, but but I, like in worship, a lot of times when the anointing is really strong, this will start happening to people. Oh, it used to happen at 219 all the time. So we had to, like, we would go put our arms around the person and just start praying with them, and you know, who's like this, you know, because they're contorting. 
Listen, the power of God when you worship. That's why worship is so key. And a lot of people hate worship. I'm sorry to say. It wow. doesn't mean they don't have spirits, but there's something there and not wanting them there because they know the power. The enemy knows the power in that. Okay. That's right. So when a person, how does a person get freedom? So we'll end with this. First of all, we have to humble ourselves. Yeah. You're yawning. Are you okay here? <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like I can go on too. So So we humble ourselves, all right? And so here's what's really important. A lot of times people want to blame everybody and their mother for what's going on. We have to own our own stuff. That's right. All right. So humble ourselves without pointing our fingers at other people. Right. Yeah, but the reason is because they know. Humble yourself and own yeah. your own stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Confess your sins. Mm-hmm. Right. Then we confess that we're honest. Yeah. yeah. To the Lord. Lord, this is what I've done. I'm so sorry. I repent. Yeah. And then you repent, right? Yeah. You renounce and break agreements. I, Lord, I renounce this sin. I break agreements with these spirits. I break the soul tie with this lie. I'm no longer in agreement with you. You are not going to control me any longer. This thought process, you will no longer have control. Now, the enemy doesn't just like to leave, right? There's there's going to be a war over it, but greater is he that's in you. How bad do you want your freedom? Uh, that's right. Jesus yeah. came to set the captives free. We are never to, to think that this is our lot in life. I'm always going to be this way. I'm never going to have freedom. I'm never going to be happy. I'm never going to have joy. That's baloney. That is not the spirit of God. That's right. All right? And so then we, we forgive ourselves. And we forgive others. Yeah. That's critical. Yeah. yeah, but you don't know what they did to me. Yes, right. I, I understand that. Yeah. And, uh, what's his name? Jack Hayford had a wonderful book out called mm-hmm. Forgiveness is God's Gift to Us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. so forgiveness isn't for that person. It's for me. Yeah. There is a book um, that um, I forget. I, I don't know. I don't remember. All I know is that the example was that forgi- unforgiveness is literally like carrying that person on your back. Yes, mm-hmm. like like having a dead body dead on body. your back, yeah. and thinking that that you're hurting them. You're not. You're hurting yourself. Yeah. If you have a dead body on your back, yeah. that body starts to decompose. Right. You have rot your body. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's what unforgiveness yeah. does. All right? right. And so that's really, really, really important. As I said earlier on, unforgiveness is one of the key things that keeps the demon in. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. They will not budge. Usually, right? We'll go back after that and say, okay. Let, let's just review this again. Is there anyone or you or most of the time they, they're not forgiving themselves? Yeah. Or it, you know, because forgiveness is a whole process. Yeah. Right. And it takes time, yeah. you know. Yes. But so what we yeah. preface it is I choose to forgive that right. individual. Right. Yeah. Because see, we can't forgive on our own. We have we yeah. need the Holy Spirit to help yeah. us. Yeah. So we need God. But Lord, I choose to forgive yeah. him now, Lord. Help me, yeah. Bring me into that place of forgiveness yeah. Yeah. first. Yeah. So there's there's a timing in that. But see, the Lord sees your humbleness. He sees your humility, yeah. rather. He sees your willingness yeah. to forgive. Right. Then you break curses. If there's generational curses, yeah. which we'll talk about that another time. And then you command the spirits to go. Yeah. 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 Then he has to leave. Mm-hmm. So now, not always when you're praying that there, is there a manifestation. But when we go through, we break inner vows, we break bitter judgments, we walk a person through forgiveness, that, that really has really alleviated a lot of all that crazy manifestation. Mm-hmm. And most often when we did have crazy manifestations, that's when they were involved in the occult. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So anyway, so um, then I, I just have here, what are our weapons for deliverance? Mm-hmm. I don't, I, that might be the blood of Jesus, right? We know the power of the blood, the, the word of God. You must know the word. Uh, speaking in tongues, intercessory prayer, your anointing oil. You know, we, uh, that, that all these things are key. And that, we, um, you know, that's for your own personal prayer life and your own personal time is praying before you meet that individual. And then um, I just wrote here um, in, the, in, in Derek Prince's book, he has, um, <clears throat> I think it's like seven or eight um, um, identifications if you see that there's a consistency here of a curse. <clears throat> so and I'm going to just close with this and I'll open up for questions. Inability to move forward. Destructive or sinful behaviors. A dark cloud of oppression. 
patterns of sickness. And we're going to do a class on curses. So I just want you to know that. A continual financial lack and instability. Cycle of relational breakdown. Inability to conceive or a pattern of miscarriages. A sense of an unseen barrier between you and God. You just can't break through, you know. And so are, are there word curses? <clears throat> word curses are very powerful as well. And the other one that, that's very powerful that we, we would pray in, in deliverance is in um, illegitimacy. In Deuteronomy 23, when, when there's, uh, in the King James re references it as a bastard curse. In Deuteronomy 23 says um, that if there's illegitimacy or bastard curse, it goes down 400 generations. Wow. Now, what that is, is a lot of the, the manifestation of that is uh, like abandonment issues. Like you're always feeling like you're on the outside looking in. You can't connect. <clears throat> you know, you're, you're, you know, there's um, financial despair. That, that I'm telling you, most of the world now, uh, every, you know, has kids out of wedlock. Yeah. Yeah. And it perpetuates this cycle of illegitimate curse, a bastard curse. Now, the wow. good thing is, Jesus came and set the captives Amen. free. Amen. And there's deliverance. People don't have to stay in that. But for now, I mean, you know that that's what we're dealing with. When you read through Deuteronomy 23, you'll see the effects of that. So, Jesus, there's a lot in the Bible here about <clears throat> freedom, about bitterness, bitterness, even in your home. In Leviticus, it talks about um, just even uh, like there would be green mold, mold in the walls. That had to do with bitterness and anger in the home, about how even praying bitterness through your home and, and doing a cleansing in your home, how important that is, how to anoint your home with oil. And just every so often, keep praying through it. You say, well, you know, because you have different people coming in your home, different yeah. things at times, you don't know. Just pray through it all the time. Yeah. Pray cleansing yeah. in your home. Yep. Amen. You know, so it's really important to do that. So um, for tonight, this was a little more of the introductory thing. I know I went through a lot of it. There's a lot here, but then we're going to break it down uh, each week as we go through this. Um, we're going to talk about one of the things that one of the things we are going to discuss is the spirit of fear. We're going to talk about rejection because rejection is huge and abandonment issues, you know. Generational curses, sexual issues. You know, how do I how do how do address these things? Yeah. Um, and um, and other issues that um, you know, I know curses. There's you know religious spirits. Uh, you know, and how do we identify with this thing? And and even you know, then we're going to take it even a step further, like dealing with a Jezebel spirit. What what, what about a Python spirit, Absalom spirit, Behemoth? What what do all those represent? How do you identify those things? You know, right. so. Jesus came and set the captives free, and boy, oh boy, am I ever grateful for the power of the blood and for forgiveness. I am just so grateful because, you know, I don't know where we'd all be without that, right? And that we walk in a humble heart and not have a self-righteous, you know, stinky attitude towards people, but also we don't back down. We draw a line in the sand and know what the rights are and know that, uh, you know, Jesus wants us to be deliverance ministers and not everyone's called let me just say this before i close not everyone's called to be in the ministry of deliverance like some people have said look that's just not for me but we're all called to know how to operate and cast devils out he said heal the sick cleanse the leopard cast out devils raise the dead we're all called to do that right. so and that's why it's important that we learn about this amen so does anybody have any questions before we close go ahead like when you're talking about um, in the genesis, right? You say that that could be a generational thing, just like homosexuality. Yeah. Sometimes it can be generational. Absolutely. Thing. When you pray about that, do you come against? Do you pray that we demon the bloodline? Mm -hmm. Because not everybody is going to go in for that deliverance, mm -hmm. so to speak. But I know when I have to pray against that in my own family, thing. I, I heard a teaching about the demon yeah. mm -hmm. because you said it goes back right. 400 generations. Mm -hmm. So how do you really go there? I'm sorry, 400 years, 10 generations. Uh, yeah. 10 generations. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so isn't that is that a correct way to be praying to be demon? Absolutely, the yeah. Yeah, redeeming the bloodlines, cleansing the life. Yeah, hurts. yeah. Well, that's uh, supposed to be right. Going down the bloodline that our ancestors, right, that could have brought that down. That yeah, we never knew. Right, and that's how it manifested, right? Right, your generation. Right, 
Right. And so that well, when we redeem our bloodline, it's reversing the curse, it's breaking the generational curses. Yeah. And so, yes, we do do that. And so, um, yeah. Um, go ahead, Kathy. Um, I've heard of people, and I want to know about deliverance and put it in their home besides getting rid of things. And someone mentioned to me that they use sulfur, they burn sulfur. Is that's not biblical? I haven't seen it. Yeah, that's no way. Is that? that's mm -hmm. no, no, we, we use the power of the blood. Right, exactly. Yeah, no sulfur. Demons. Uh, have sulfur. Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, I know. I'm, but yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm it's, uh, they're burning something. Say, say, say. Yeah, that's new age. That's new age. Oh. Yeah, oh. that's new age. Yes. Oh. Yeah. 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 Yes. I haven't done it, but I've heard my sister. Yeah, I'm going to use the blood, and I'm sharing with other sisters. Uh, the young lady comes from a safe, safe parent, but I know that she's not saved. They're not walking, and she said she was. And she was talking about burning sage and different packets. I'm like, well, what do you what do you use that for? If you're using the blood, if you're speaking scripture, what do you need that for? Yeah, no, that's mm -hmm. that's shamans do that. They yeah. they burn yeah. the sage that's and they go through people's homes. Yeah. And they usually charge money. Jesus is free. <laughs> <laughs> we pray, we anoint, we make we pray cleansing, we make sure that you know I ask Holy Spirit, show me if there's anything in my home, anything that shouldn't be there. We pray cleansing, anointing with oil, cleanse with the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 Um when you were talking about they actually launched the organs and everything, mm -hmm. and when I was doing a deep study on trauma and everything, one thing that I learned was it through the trauma, it gets in your cells. Right. And a lot of times people with trauma will shake. Mm -hmm. Now I'm wondering, yeah. is that a demon or is that a trauma? Like not the spirit of trauma. Is that for the body's remembering the memory? Or is that a demon capturing you in a season and you start it could be both. It okay. could be both. Because okay. there's that's an imprinting soul. that takes place in our soul <laughs> right. when there's a trauma or something devastating that occurs okay. so yeah it could be it could be a spirit or it could just be you know a physiological thing you know when I was um I went to a forum at Montclair State College when I went to go to school and I went for a couple of months but um they said that 40 percent of people this is Seth Cotton Montclair all right 40 percent of people that were battling cancer was a result of unforgiveness mm -hmm. wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So, there you go. coming in from online. Okay. Mm. Well, just so you all know, we'll get a second microphone next week because the people at home couldn't hear the question. Yeah. So, sorry. we'll keep trying to improve. Um, it says, can you please, I'm sorry, is there a concern for receiving DNA from another person, such as through a transplant or a vaccine, which would be some kind of negative spiritual? Education. Well, uh, you know, as far as the vaccine is concerned, I mean, you know, here's the thing. I, you, you pray about it. You hear what the spirit of the Lord is and you plead the blood over yourself. I mean, if we don't know for a fact. I mean, maybe with the Moderna one, they're saying there's, there's fetal whatever in there. But, um, <clears throat> you know, what was the other one about the DNA? Yeah, blood blood transfusion. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. You, you can have yeah. memory. Yes, memory. From that. You really can. Yes. So, uh, yeah. but again, I just know the power of the blood and our right. prayer. Yeah. God will yeah. give you direction and show you what to yeah. do. But um, I, I think that you know you need you, you're getting that to survive. Right. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and there's life in the blood, right? And yeah. There's a cleansing, yeah, and, and prayers and, and for our own deliverance that we can pray deliverance over that which is within us, right? Why not over the organ? So. The other question, which may, you might think they're just trying to be funny, but it said, can someone have a soul tie with themselves? And uh, I understood it after I read it that, you know, you could, you could that's what narcissism is in a lot of ways. Yes, right. So you know, that's what the devil had, right? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. that yeah. exalting yourself above uh, the higher yes. power, which right. you know is God. So yeah. uh, you have to humble yourself. <laughs> You know, and, you know, I hate that Jesus said we have to crucify our flesh every day, but we do. That's what it says. Pick up your cross daily, like it or not. Um, so then I just also wanted to say, 
um, I, I was thinking about some funny things that happened when we were first learning all this, and I was more watching, you know, Trisha was getting into it, but she mentioned my Uncle Sam Teresi, who had a strong deliverance from the street in, uh, in Newark, and, you know, he, he didn't really get trained by many people, he just did it, he was a brave guy, he just figured it out, and, you know, we had questionnaires that we would use in the beginning, and they'd be going through the questionnaire and the person would start to manifest and they weren't sure which question it was. So they'd go back and ask the question to see if they would, you know, respond again that way. You know, and God just must be looking down and smiling that we're all trying. Right? Right. There's not a lot of churches that are even teaching this stuff. Yeah. Never mind operating it. And that's what I wanted to encourage you because John and Paul Sanford had a big influence on us. And, and it's prophetic ministry that really got the whole thing started is what was the Lord showing you about the person? Not just the questionnaire. The questionnaire is just a guideline, but that nothing can take the place of the Holy Spirit. Right. And but God has used people that didn't have a lot of natural ability in other areas. It, it's not you don't need a PhD to be a Christian, but you do have to be able to hear from the Spirit of God, and that will save you so much time than than week after week of question after question. The, the things they described in the book, even about things that happened in their own family, with their own children and, and grandchildren, one of their son-in-laws molested one of their grandchildren, mm -hmm. right? Like, here they are. They're doing this and writing books about it. Yeah. And, and they have to forgive the person, you know, the son-in-law. They have to stay in a relationship and force themselves through. Or they'd be sitting in a meeting and all of a sudden they'd get a picture. And, and Paula would say, hey, I see a little boy walking down a, a, like a dirt road, using a stick to hit, hit the fence. Like it was that specific. And it had been buried in this man's memory. And that's what brought it back up. Why? Because the Holy Spirit knew that was in season. That was a word in season right for that moment. And, and frankly, you know, religion doesn't teach you to be living in the moment. It teaches you to have very structured yeah. ways of thinking. And that's not trusting the prophetic. So you can save yourself a lot of time and be much, much more effective by just learning how to hear from the Lord and, and save the person a lot of pain, right? Because once, once she took that man back to that place and they prayed through it, a whole bunch of other stuff opened up, right? Because it, when, when trauma happens to people, I'm sure my conscience will talk about this, we have to cope. Right. We have to keep living. So you just put it in a closet in the back yes. and you lock the door. Yes, right. And, yes. you, you know, thank God that he yes. doesn't just come in and, and dump the whole yep. garbage truck on you of all the stuff that's in all those closets. Yep. But he does try to lead you and, and say, you know, you're ready for this one now. So let's deal with this. one. And there's always going to be another. One. Yep. <laughs> so we'll be yep. doing these classes yep. till kingdom come, right? Yep. Yep. And that's okay. Because the more people I get equipped, you know, this this will be a domino effect. The more people get free. Yeah. So, look, that's all I just want to say is that, yes, we should put the effort in, study the word, you know, do all the things that we can do, but then also learn to trust. The picture he gave me was, I have one ear towards heaven and yeah. one ear towards the person yeah. that I'm listening to, yeah. and I'm trying to just be that conduit in the yeah. middle, mm -hmm. like, and you can pause and you don't have to answer right away, you can just pray about it. Let me, let me just think about what you just said, because yeah. I feel the Lord's putting a little puzzle together for me here, yeah. But, yeah. like, what's the rush? It's okay. Like, you just learn like, like a child listens to a parent when they trust them. That's that Abba relationship that we can have. You know the Father wants this person free. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. there's no question about it. Yeah. The fact that he would choose to use, you know, uh, these jars of clay with cracks yeah. in them yeah. is really amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I saw, I wanted to encourage you that, you know, formulas are probably not the best way to go. It's right. really just right. hear from the Lord and, yeah. and learn how to Hear his voice. Yeah. You want to close and then, so it's discipline, liberty. You discipline yourself, you learn, and then you start flowing in the Holy Spirit. And, yeah. you, and you just start operating. So for some, if you've never heard from this, you have to learn the guidelines. And and the thing is about what we found it was so powerful in deliverance that I found it made more of a lasting effect with integrating the inner healing and deliverance, yes, casting yes. out of devils. So we'll do some teaching on bitter root judgments, uh, soul ties, um, that inner vows, identifications of love, basic faith. These things, they're integrated. And so when, when some of these people start to learn that stuff, right, when we start teaching it, and then we were casting the devils out, they learn, because the whole idea, too, is to teach that person how to keep their freedom, yeah. right, which is really important, right? 
So it, it's just so powerful. And, and it, the privilege is seeing the freedom yeah. Yeah. in the people. When you see them set free, oh my gosh. And I'll tell you, Adriel, these teenagers need to hear this stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. They really do. So, so Lord, we just thank you, Father, for the hunger that's here. Yeah. And we thank you, oh God, that that I love the word that it says that you are manifested to destroy the works of the enemy. And so, Lord, and you have given us that authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. And so, Father, it's our desire is to see people set free, to see our own lives and our own families set free. And so, Lord, we just bless you and we thank you that you are good. Yeah. And we thank you, oh God, that you have provided a way of escape for all of us, regardless of what we were going through, and that you're faithful and true, and we can trust you. Yeah. So, Lord, we just thank you for this evening. We thank you for each and every person here. We pray abundance and blessings and favor upon their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.